SQL also allows to compare a single value with the result of a subquery without using the keywords all, any, or some. But the restriction is then that the subquery also must return a single value, so not just a single column, but also a single row. So we are allowed to write comparisons like x is equal to some subquery if it is guaranteed that the subquery returns a single value, so a single column and a single row. This comparison can also be a different comparison. The main point is that the subquery is a single value subquery such that this comparison is between atomic values. Let's have a look at an example. Here we want to have the students that got full points for homework one. So in the outer query, we query the students table and the results. We select only the results that belong to the student and we look only at homework one results. Then here we have a comparison that the points obtained for the homework by the student S should be equal to, and in the subquery, we select the max points from the exercises table for homework one. So why does the subquery deliver a single value? And if you write such single value comparisons, you should really think about why the subquery is guaranteed to deliver a single value. Can there not be multiple rows? Because if the subquery returns multiple rows, then the database management system will bring a runtime error. So during execution of the query, the system will bring an error. So why does this query return a single value? Clearly it returns a single column because we select only a single attribute. It is also guaranteed to return only a single row because we are looking only at category homework and number one. And category and number together are a key for the exercises table. So this uniquely identifies the exercise. So there can be only one exercise with category homework and number one. So in this case, this is fine. There can be only one row in the result. So indeed, this query will give us those students that have obtained the full points for homework one. So in order to avoid that the database management system will give errors at runtime, you should really make sure that the single value subqueries really return at most one row. And in order to ensure this, you should use integrity constraints like we've just argued. We've argued that the homework one is a key, therefore there can be only one row returned. If the subquery does not return any rows, then this is interpreted as the value null. So an empty subquery is interpreted as null. So in principle, we could abuse this. We could use this to check for an empty subquery result. We could do this as follows. We can write our subquery and we could say is null. So basically this is saying not exists. However, this is considered bad style. So if you want to check whether a subquery is empty, you should really use exists or not exists.